Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I'm going to show you how I made this DIY sequin fabric prom dress with a tie back for my daughter for prom last year. Now the first thing we need to talk about is how to modify the pattern. And I self-drafted this pattern, but you can get any pattern as long as the bodice has princess seam lines and the skirt is just darts with a zipper and center back. So for example, McCall 7654 has pretty much all of the same features as this pattern I drafted for myself. The only difference is that I changed my neckline to be a sweetheart neckline. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So here is the general princess seamed pattern here. I've got it printed out at half scale. And you can see that instead of coming straight across, I just modified this part into a V. And then I added a seam at center front, and we'll talk about why in just a second. Because I was sewing with sequins, I wanted to eliminate as many seams as possible. When you're working with sequin fabric, the fewer seams you sew, the better especially when you're going to be hand stitching sequins over those seams to make the seams less visible. So starting with this princess seam bodice, I really wanted to first modify the back piece to make this tie. So some tie panels you'll see, they're going to be straight on the sides here and then tied in between and they're kind of like a square cut out of the back. My daughter really wanted more of a V shape and I agreed that that was more flattering and it would be easier to install the zipper underneath the tie. So what we did on the back piece here is we decided after making the pattern out of a muslin fabric, we decided to go ahead and cut it right like this. So we just did a V back and so the center back is almost eliminated. There's just enough left of the center back piece so that you have a side seam where it attaches to the side back. Because I wanted to take advantage of this scalloped edge on the fabric, I needed to cut my pattern so that there were straight edges. That's why you see this is a straight V and not a curve like a traditional um, sweetheart neckline. And I needed to eliminate those seams. So what I started doing is we taped this, the center back to the side back. So this becomes one pattern piece. And then we taped it to the side front. So this becomes a second pattern piece. Now, this is almost a straight line. So I'll show you the full size pattern piece and how I cut it out with that scalloped edge but I wanted to keep this line that's gonna be this line here pretty much straight. Similar to how I eliminated seams on the bodice of the dress wherever possible, I also wanted to eliminate seams on the skirt while keeping the hemline straight so that I could take advantage of this same scalloped edge because it's down both edges of the fabric. I wanted to use the scalloped edge on the bottom of the skirt as well so that I wouldn't have to hem the sequins. So here was the original skirt pattern. You can see center front, center back, and the center front was supposed to be cut on the fold. The center back has a seam allowance to allow for a zipper. But as I wanted to eliminate as many seams as possible, I went ahead and flipped the pattern pieces over, retraced them, and so I also have these where we've got center front and center back here. And then I went ahead and I started eliminating seams. So center front on the fold, super easy to eliminate that seam. Go ahead and tape that together. When you match up the side seams, you'll notice how this shaping here at the hip looks like a dart. And my daughter didn't want an entirely straight skirt. She wanted a little flare at the bottom. So I tilted my pattern piece a little bit until the dart point was about even with the other dart points which added a little bit of flair at the bottom. And then we did the same thing on the other side. And then we do want to take a ruler and because this needs to be a straight seam all the way across on the bottom for that hem, I went ahead and I marked off the pieces that we were gonna cut because of how I had tilted it. And we were going to make it that much shorter so that there's a straight line straight across the bottom and that the curve was getting cut into this portion here. And then all I had to do was sew darts, which there's one right here and you can barely see it because I did sew 
the sequins on top of the dart to keep that shaping but not have it be visible all the way across the skirt. So that's how the skirt was cut out. Let me lay out some of the extra fabric I had and the actual pattern pieces so you can see how these were cut. Okay, here's some of the extra fabric that I had. We purchased this fabric months before I made the dress and so I bought a lot because I wasn't sure exactly what the dress design was going to look like, what she wanted. She had just chosen this fabric. We were in Dallas shopping in the fabric warehouse area so it wasn't terribly expensive to buy extra. To cut out the bodice, these were what my pattern pieces look like. So here is the front. I added a seam allowance center front, and here is that neckline portion. Here's the curved seam that goes right through here, the princess seam. And then this is that underarm area where I wanted to keep the scallops. So basically what I did is I laid the pattern out and I went a little higher right here than the pattern area right there under the arm and you can see that here to keep those scallops and I went a little lower at the tips here and I made sure that the point lined up with a point on the fabric and then I did the same thing here so the point was lining up with the center of a point so that I could join it to look like this and then for the front piece I laid it straight like that so it's got this scallop here and again I was paying attention to where that center front was going to end up and I tried to give myself a little bit of extra fabric so that when I sewed this together I could do it in a way to make the join basically invisible on that edge. So this is how I laid out pieces to cut for the bodice and then I basically flipped them over and you know moved them down paying attention to where those points were going to be to cut out the other side of the dress. So I've got some sample bo pretend bodice pieces because I had extra fabric and this I'm going to show you how I constructed the bodice on the dress. After I seamed together the outer sequin fabric, you can see the center front seam and the side seams, and this allowed me to get nice scallops where they meet there. I set that aside and I cut the lining out twice. I cut the center piece on the fold because I didn't need a seam since I'm not working with scallops here. And this lining is what will be seen inside the dress. This layer is going to get sandwiched in between the lining and the outer fabric. And on this layer, I went ahead and stitched down the seam allowance. And it is a little bit puckered because when you're sewing a curve like that, there's more fabric on this outer edge than the inner edge, so the outer edge is puckered, but again, you won't see this layer at all in the finished dress. The reason I stitched this down is because I'm going to sew this piece of lining onto the wrong side of this outer fabric. So, with this piece of lining, I want the bodice boning inserted. So I've made a little channel by stitching that seam allowance down and I've cut the boning and I've stitched across the top of that channel so that I can insert boning in here to help give a little shape to the dress and support. So this piece of lining, now I'm going to put the outer fabric and we'll pin those together. So in the process of making my actual dress and not this pretend one here, I went ahead and covered these seams with extra sequins first and there is a video linked below showing how to do that. Then I pinned the outer sequins to that lining with the boning and hand stitched along this edge below that seam allowance, hand stitched the sequins to the inner lining piece. Then when I inserted the straps, so pretend this is a strap, I pinned the outer, outer inner lining, the, the lining that shows on the inside of the dress, pinned that together but only with the lining piece. So these sequins and scallops got tucked inside and these two lining pieces were pinned together. 
and that allows the lining to be below the bottom of the scallops and for the scallops to be up and free on the final dress. Once the whole bodice was done, I covered the seam lines and things. Then I did the darts in the skirt and stitched sequins over those. And then I attached the sequin part to the sequin part of the bodice. Then I did the lining. So you can see it's got darts as well. And I attached the lining to the lining part of the bodice. So this could all still open up, like I could take the two skirt pieces and open them away from each other. They were not attached at the zipper yet. They were only attached to the waistline of their respective side of the dress. After I sewed this waistline seam, and before I took all the time to sew, hand sew the sequins over it to hide the seam a little more, I had my daughter try this on with her shoes. It was important we had the prom shoes at that point because since I used the scallop edge for the hemline at the bottom, the only way to shorten this skirt is to shorten it from the waistline seam. So we had to make sure that it was the perfect length on her before I went ahead and finished that outer waistline seam. The lining part of the skirt is shorter by an inch or two so that the scallops here, you can see I just did a serge edge finish on the lining and then the scallops extend beyond and they are not attached to each other at the bottom. Then I placed the bodice lining and the outer bodice right sides together with these little bias tape sewn shut, like I just basically made bias tape out of the lining fabric and then sewed the edges shut. And I sewed three on each side of the bodice here. After I had that loop area sewn and the lining was attached at the bodice and above the waist, it was time to determine where we wanted the slit and sew in the slit. The first step was, um, while she was trying this on, to make sure that the waist was in the correct place so that we wouldn't have to shorten it. We also marked on the fabric here, I did a thread marking to where we wanted the slit to end on the sequin fabric. Let's pretend that this is my outer fabric for my skirt and this is my lining fabric. For simplicity's sake, I'm not gonna sew all the little darts in here because this is a quarter scale skirt and it's tiny. But this is approximately where the marking for the slit, where I want it to end. And to show you on a pattern where that would be, you want it on the, the front portion of the pattern, and you want it approximately halfway between each of the two darts. If your pattern only has one dart here, you want it in line with the bottom of that dart, and that will give you a pleasing presentation and then you just have to measure up how high do you want that slit to go. But so here's my thread marking here that you can see on the front, like that's where I want my slit to end. And there's my little stitch on the back side where I want the slit to end. So what I'm gonna do is also determine about how wide do I want it at the bottom. Now on this one, she wanted the slit to kind of be in a V shape so there was much more leg revealed as you got lower down the skirt. And so we went a couple inches at the bottom of how wide we wanted the slit to be and then just drew it in a V. So I'm gonna start by drawing a cut line right here down the middle. Okay, so that's the part that will be cut to make the slit. And then since this is quarter scale, if I go an inch each direction, that will be a quarter inch because it's quarter scale. The important part is you only want to do the V at the bottom. Like you only want to spread it apart at the bottom. You do not want to go off, like you don't want to make a square shape at the top or you'll have a square shape to cut out. Now remember when I had the skirts at this point, so there's a bodice here and it's attached in the middle and it's kind of standing up because those side seams were sewn, but they were like this. And I was still able, since I hadn't sewn that center back seam, to fold my dress so that the lining and the bodice were right sides together here, wrong side out, and I could put this in my machine and I could stitch that up. So once you've stitched on those stitching lines, 
then you can cut on that center slit line. And this is nerve wracking to do when it's one of the last steps, but cut and make sure you don't cut to the stitching, through the stitching line, but cut as close as you can to where you turned your needle. And then once you have cut that slit, then you need to turn the whole thing right side out. And then you see you end up with a nice finished slit. After I sewed the slit, hopefully you can see it. I'm kind of reflecting it with the light here. There's a little bit of hand stitching up each side of the slit here. And that is where I was very carefully tacking the lining to the outer fabric. So it is actually sewn through both layers. It's attached there. And that was just so that the lining wouldn't flip out through the slit. You don't want to top stitch on sequins. It doesn't work very well, but you can hand stitch like this to keep the lining in place. Once that was done, the slit, then I could turn everything right side out and then I placed right sides together, like we basically rolled it like this, and sewed the center back seam. I basted above the zipper area so that I could install the zipper just in the outer fabric. So at this point, the lining was still not attached to the zipper area. And the very last step was to turn the whole thing so that I could sew the center back seam of the lining. And then I sewed it, let me turn this whole thing up inside out so you can see. Here's the dress inside out. So I sewed this center back seam up to just below the bottom of the zipper. And then this part got attached to the zipper, like I, I turned it and I ended up basting this by hand so that it is not anywhere, like it's attached to the zipper, but it's not anywhere close to the teeth, so it doesn't get stuck in the teeth when you're zipping it up. So I realized that was a pretty quick overview of my process of sewing this dress, but check out this video for more in-depth information on working with sequin fabric, including how I sewed the sequins over the seams and other tips and tricks so that you won't be pulling your hair out while working with the sequins.